you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, November 5th, 2014. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Today in the Finice Monitor, we'll meet Alex Valente, who's done a lot of traveling in the past few months. First, he boarded a plane to Hawaii for the Junior Pan Pacific Championships, and then just last week, he was off to Asia for two meets on the FINA World Cup circuit. Now he's back home in Santa Barbara, finishing up his senior year, and we now meet Alex via Skype from his high school at uh, Dos Pueblos Senior High School, is that correct? Yeah, this is Jeff. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, good to have you. What a great experience to be able to travel to Tokyo and then to Singapore for the World Cup meets. I mean, did you have any expectations going into this trip at all? Um, I, I had a bit. I just hoped I'd make it back at least once. Uh, you know, going into it, I didn't really put too much extra preparation. I mean, I've been training into it, but I didn't put um, a taper on it. it so I didn't have uh, the best quality speed work I had going to some of my bigger meets, but uh, you know, all around it was a good meet, and I made it back in at least one event, which was my goal. So yeah, yeah. So you made it in the final of the hundred fly in Singapore. Yeah. So you're in the ready room with Chad Leclo. Did you <laughs> give him a stare down at all to try and psych him out? Uh, no. To be honest, uh, Chad Leclo is actually a, a great guy because uh, actually we I was right next to him in prelims and. Uh, you know, during in the ready room, he comes up to me. I didn't even have to talk to him. He came up to me and said, "Hey, uh, good luck on your uh, good luck on your swim." And no, it was, was nerve-wracking next to uh, Olympic gold medalist. But uh, I don't know. He, he was a nice guy, and it kind of everything. It was, it was a good environment to be in, and everyone was nice and uh, wasn't too nerve-wracking. So it was well, good. Good. Well, for those who haven't been to a World Cup meet, try to describe what the environment is like. Um, it's very tense, I would say, because, you know, me being a non-professional athlete, I can't win money or stuff, but people are there as their job, so they are there hoping to get first, second, or third, so they can go home and pay the bills, and it's, it's definitely a tense experience, because you're in there, in there, in there, everyone there is trying to, you know, win as much money as they can, so, um, a lot of people very into their zone, but then, kind of, there's other end of the spectrum, you know, me being a non-professional athlete, I almost was there to learn to a degree, not like had to have fun and get to know the experience. You know, I had to bring my credential to the ready room almost 20 minutes before my race when, you know, you go to almost any other senior meet and you're uh, behind the box two minutes beforehand. So um, it's a different environment, but it's a, it's a great one. It's really fun. So you said you were there to learn. What do you think was the biggest lesson that you learned there? Um, I don't know, preparation, I guess. A lot of the times at senior meets, or even like, you know, for me, CIF, the California uh, Swim, or California Sports Federation, we, uh, you can show up behind the blocks as they blow the short whistles and you'll be fine. They don't, you know, they don't really regulate that. But at this big international level, you had to be in the ready room almost 20 minutes before um, your race started. So if you had back-to-back -back races, you very well may not have warm, may not warm down and uh, just preparation, everything that goes into it. You have a longer warm up going into your first event. You have to have, you know, your credentials and your goggles and your caps already lined or ready to grab as you get out of the warm up pool and go straight to the ready room and, you know, very well may do three or four events back to back to back with no, no warm down in between. Well, that's not too bad. It is a good lesson to learn because as you get older and you get to more of these international meets, which I'm sure you're hoping to do, that's, that's definitely the norm. So, you, yeah, you just can't get used to just showing up two minutes before your race. That's definitely not going to be what they're going to be expecting you at the big meets. Yeah, most definitely. Um, you got to hang out with a couple uh, you know, big name Americans as well. That must have been fun to kind of get to know them a little bit better. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think we all see them on TV, Elizabeth Weitzel and... Uh, Anthony Irving, but um, you see all these really big names and kind of think, wow, they must be like, you know, kind of, they're a different type of person. They've been to the Olympics. 
But really, when it comes down to it, they're all just like us. They're all just like me. They're just great people to be around. Like uh, Felicia Lee was there, and she she's a wonderful person. She's super funny, always really happy and smiling. Same with Beisel. She, uh, she's the goofiest person I've met ever. And you know, Tony, he's a little bit older and more like uh, he's a little bit older, but he just he's still so great. He, everything he does is super. Uh, Super positive, motivational. It's just real nice what he does, and you know, they're all great people. Yeah, I, I would imagine uh, getting to, to hang out with them is, is going to be one of your top memories. Oh no, most definitely it is. Uh, well, I hope you guys got to do more than just you know see the hotel and the pool go back and forth. Did you do any sightseeing at all? Yeah, actually, the last day in Tokyo as a team, we went to Shibuya Square, which is uh, the busiest intersection in the world, or so they say. And uh, I don't know, we we kind of had a uh, the men's team, all six of us, we were in a group and we went around and we got um, we got sushi and we went to a couple of stores and got some more food. But it's really cool to see this place because they're the busiest area in the world and all these people are walking. Everyone's going somewhere with a purpose and just kind of cool to sit and people watch. You're kind of taking the scenery. Real interesting. Well, I'm sure sushi in Tokyo is nothing like sushi you've had in the United States. <laughs> no, definitely not. That uh, sushi we had was really, really good. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You, you probably can't eat any more sushi now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, this has been a really big year for you. I would say 2014 has just been amazing. You won the 100 Fly at Long Course Juniors. You won the gold in the 100 Fly at Junior Pan Packs with a 52.6. Traveled to Asia. Earlier this year, you broke the national age group record in the 100 short course yards fly. How much of the success was expected and how much of it was not expected? Um, I don't know. I think it kind of came as I did it. I mean, when I first broke the national age group record, I think that was, uh, I think, somewhat expected. You know, I had trained to that point. My goal was to break uh, 47 seconds, which uh, I, I did. I went 46.99. And, uh, you know, I, kinda, as it kept going, as it progressed, I realized the goals I could be doing are bigger and bigger and bigger. So at first, you know, it was just let's break this natural age of record. And then it ended up being, hey, let's win Junior Pan Pass, which, you know, kind of compiled on itself. That is amazing. It's kind of, I guess that's probably, is that the way you usually approach your seasons? Is it kind of take a one meet at a time? Or do you have a goal for the end of the season that you are really training for? Um, I would say I kind of do have one big goal at the end of the season. That's like the end. That's what I want to do. But then again, I don't really, that's not really the forefront of my mind. I do take into me individually. Every meet I go to is a new opportunity. Maybe not to go best time, but to fix one little thing on your, uh, on your race, a little, one little bit of technique. And then at the end of the season, that all compiles into what I hope to be is my goal swim. Right. Um, your best of it is the 100 fly, but you're also really good in the 200 fly. In fact, you almost broke two minutes long course last, yeah. last summer at Nationals. Uh, 20061, I believe. So uh, what's the bigger priority for you now? Breaking two minutes in that 200 fly or breaking 51 in the 100 fly? Or breaking 52 in the 100 fly, sorry. Yeah. I'm going to say the 51 in the 100 fly. I mean, the 200 fly, I personally... I wasn't too pleased with that. I feel like I could have been breaking two already. I should have broken two a while ago. But, uh, you know, just due to the circumstances, I just didn't, you know, not, I didn't have the best race ever or whatever. But um, it was uh, it was overall a iffy year for my 200. So I'm hoping my 100 flies really was going to help me. I mean, it only takes one event to make the Olympics. So hopefully I can get that 100 fly in two years down to a 51 lower and a 50, uh, like a 50 high. And from there, you know, we'll see how that goes. But in 100 for fly down is really what I'm trying to work on for so the next couple of years. So like a lot of people, you are already got your sights set on 2016. You've got <laughs> your goals all planned out. Yeah. Well, you're definitely going to have a lot, some great uh, people to work with starting next fall at Southern Cal. We're going to be going to college. Uh, you know, it's not too far away from home from you in Santa Barbara. Was that one of the criteria to be able to stay close to home? Um, staying close to home wasn't really criteria, but staying like uh, a reasonable distance. Like uh, I really wouldn't want to go to school in Europe. That's a little bit too far. Even even the East Coast was a bit too far for me. But uh, UC just happened to be the school that was for me, and just happened to be this close to home. So it's a it's a good it's a good setup we have going here. It's about an hour and a half drive down to USC. You can come home every weekend if I wanted to. So it's nice. Yeah, and you definitely, I definitely. Uh 
can't argue against Dave Salo's training, but what do you think was the uh, biggest factor for you to pick USC? Um, I would have to say the team. The team there, I mean, they're really close-knit. I liked all the guys there. They're all uh, re really almost like a family to a degree, and uh, I'm excited to be part of that. And then, as you said, the, the training style is almost exactly what I'm looking for. The, uh, Dave Sill does a bit of the you know, sprint training sort of thing. So um, it's exciting to uh, have, that, have that new transition into my uh, swimming career and my repertoire of training. I'm sure it will be. Uh, do you, would you say you're a better short course or long course swimmer? Um, that's tough to say. I think overall, I would say I'm a better short course swimmer, but uh, yeah, it's hard. The uh, long course is also pretty good. So um, it's, a, it's a bit of a toss up, but you go either way. Well, that's interesting. I've, I've heard from very few people who said they're, they're pretty good at both. I mean, most people say I'm much better at one or the other. So is that, has that always been the case for you? Has it kind of evolved over time? I think it's definitely evolved over time. I would, if you asked me maybe a year and a half ago, I'd say my short course better. But then this past year, you know, I went a 52.6 in the 100 fly, which is actually 0 0.08, 8100th away from the junior world record. So I think it's, uh, I think it kind of depends on the race. Like even my 200 short course, I would say is better than my 200 long course. But kind of depends the race. And I would say it's about equal at this point. Yeah, I don't know which, I don't actually don't know which is worse, a 200 long course fly or a 200 short course fly. They just both sound <laughs> just equally painful to me. <laughs> yeah, they're both pretty good. <laughs> well, I know you got to get back to, uh, to class, Alex, but before we let you go, we want to submit you to our final five. These are five questions we ask our guests on the Morning Swim Show. So the first question for you is, if you could trade lives with any swimming celebrity, who would it be? Any swimming celebrity. You know what, Chad LeClaw, as I kind of mentioned earlier, he's a great guy, I saw him in the Reddit room, he's, like a, he's a really nice guy all around, so oh, I'd like to be in his shoes for a while, that'd be cool. Yeah, definitely no argument there. Who's a non-swimming celebrity you would like to trade lives with for a day? Non-swimming celebrity? Um, Johnny Depp. Actually, I just watched all the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, so that's at the forefront of my mind. <laughs> Very good actor, very interesting person too. Yeah. Uh, besides his current year, which has been great, what's a year of your life that you would like to relive? Year of my life? Eighth grade year. Uh, so however, however long ago that was. Uh, I don't know, just a good year. Very, very uh, good in school, good friend. Good year. All right. What's your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I don't know, I just watch uh, The Edge of Tomorrow, you know, with uh, Tom Cruise. I recently watched that again. I thought, you know, that's, that's a real good movie. That's a uh, movie I definitely watched multiple times. So let's just say that, I guess. Okay, well, I haven't seen it, but you, you've piqued my yeah, interest. No, it's, it's definitely a good movie. It's one of the better sci-fi movies I've seen in quite some time. So, yeah. I'll have to catch it when it comes out on DVD. Yeah. All right, last question for you. What's your favorite season? My favorite season? Summer. And that's why I'm staying in California, because it's summer year-round. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Definitely no argument there. All right, Alex, thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations on what's been a great year. We're looking forward to 2015. See how that goes as well. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for having me on the show. My pleasure. Thank you. And our thanks to you as well for joining us for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. I'll be back tomorrow, and I hope you will join me as well. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.